Hey what's up guys, today I'll show you a horror film, Jeepers Creepers, part 3. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The creeper is a bat-like creature that comes to eat humans for 23 days every 23 years, during the 23rd of spring. It has the capacity to rebuild itself through eating humans, and it can smell human fear. One night the creeper is chasing a man with a machete. It throws a shuriken at him, but it misses. A car is passing by, so the man runs to it, shouting for help. However, the creeper lands and instantly grabs him away. The car driver witnesses everything, and he comes down out of curiosity. The machete lands in his car, followed by the creeper's hand, after the victim manages to cut it from the creeper. The scene then moves 23 years after during the creeper's another feasting season. The creeper recently victimized Derry from the police station. It has taken away Derry and left its own truck in the police station. The police inspect the truck, and they find a horrifying scene. It contains five corpses and several human bones. An officer closely looks inside, and the truck's trapdoor suddenly snaps, injuring his arms. For their safety, the police chief, called sergeant, instructs them to immediately impound the truck. The sheriff and his group soon arrive on the scene to provide backup. As sergeant informs sheriff about the situation, the truck instantly releases a rope with a spear, which nearly hits sheriff. In a few moments the truck drags its back again. After that, sergeant shows the window where the creeper flies away while taking away dairy. The police alert them that the impound truck has taken the creeper's truck away. Sheriff instructs everyone to stop the impound truck, as they still need to inspect the creeper's truck for additional information. They then immediately drive away to get it. Meanwhile, the impound truck is already in the middle of the highway. The creeper with his axe suddenly emerges from behind, and removes its own truck from the impound truck. The driver and his escort police officer come out, and find the truck moving on its own with the creeper. They both get completely terrified by the creeper's ugly face. The officer frantically radios for help, but there is no signal in the area. The creeper truck comes back, leaving the two searching for the creeper. In a few moments, it lands to grab the driver. The officer points her gun at it, but it warns her not to shoot. The officer is too stunned to shoot, allowing the creeper to freely take the driver away. Meanwhile, the sheriff shares to sergeant that he had already encountered the creeper 23 years ago. He then says the creeper will head north to hunt, and the ravens and crows will follow its trajectory. The following day, a grandma walks out of her house and sees her dead son's ghost waving from the hilltop. Apparently, her son is the prom guy who got victimized by the creeper 23 years ago. Grandma then approaches him on the hilltop. There, he tells her that the creeper will come back to the area to get its lost hand 23 years ago. It turns out that its hand contains information about it. He then warns that it will kill everyone around it, including Grandma and her granddaughter, Addie. From their house, Addie wakes up and sees Grandma talking to no one, as her dead son's ghost only shows himself to Grandma. Addie then witnesses Grandma grieve for her dead son. After that, she starts her day by feeding her beloved horse, but there is no hay left. She then asks for Grandma's permission to buy some hay. But Grandma tells her they have no money to pay for it. Grandma then instructs her to go away from their house for a few days. In the police station, Sheriff and his group are preparing to hunt down the creeper. He informs Sergeant that his group consists of people who want to take revenge against the creeper for victimizing their relatives. He then convinces Sergeant to join their group to defeat it. One of the members brings a heavy machine gun to fight it. It turns out his father gets killed by the creeper in front of him. Meanwhile, Addie is driving the truck to get hay. She then stops by her friend's house. There, the friend's rude brother, rude guy, is hurting a rabbit for fun. Rude guy goes dirt biking with his friends in the middle of the field. As they roam around, they encounter the idle creeper's truck. They get curious about it, and come to inspect it. One of them figures out that it is from the creeper, but rude guy says the creeper's story is not real. They then observe the truck closely, and one kid proceeds to pee on it. The other kid suggests destroying it. So, one of them throws a stone on it, but it ricochets back to him. Rude guy attempts the door, and it automatically opens, revealing the corpses inside. As he comes to check it, the door snaps, barely hitting him. At this point, everyone gets terrified and quickly drives away with their dirt bikes. The truck shoots its rope spear, impaling rude guy in the leg. He then gets trapped by the spear, and his friends come back to help him. His friends attempt to remove it from his leg, but in a few moments the truck pulls back the rope spear, dragging him back with it. One of his friends drives away in fear, while his other friends stay to remove it. Right then, the creeper arrives, dropping his victim from the sky. They see it land on the truck, which scares their shit off. The two friends quickly run away in fear. 
In response, the creeper gets his spear and throws it at them. Unfortunately, the spear hits both of them, which impales their bodies together. The creeper collects their bodies in the truck. It then smells the kid's smelly pee, which pisses it off. So it comes to chase the kid, who manages to drive away. It eventually catches up with the kid, and instantly grabs him midair. Later, Addie arrives in the hay store, and asks the shop owner to lend her hay, since she does not have any money. But the owner refuses her request, because they have too much debt on the store. She then leaves the store empty-handed. Her friend, who is the store owner's son, takes some hay from the store for her. She gladly accepts her friend's offer, as her Ferrari horse is really hungry. The two of them proceed to feed the hungry horse. There, her friend asks her for a date. Just then, the friend takes notice of Grandma digging something on the hilltop. After that, he is about to deliver more hay. So he asks Addie to come with him. They then drive together to the plantation. Grandma searches for the creeper's hand on the hilltop. Her dead son appears again, warning her to stop. But she insists that she wants to know why it killed her son. She soon finds it, and reports it to Sheriff. She then places it on the table, and touches it. In response, it holds her and picks her up. It puts her in a seemingly hypnotized state, where she gains knowledge about the creeper's history. Addie and her friend arrive at the plantation. However, they see the agitated horses running freely. They also notice the plantation's owner and his men are also hiding under the tanker. The owner calls his son, and instructs him to call the sheriff for help. As the friend gets back to the car, a dying, bloody man runs to their window, asking for help. Just then, they see the creeper throw the tanker, and grab the man underneath it. The creeper smells their fear, and comes to them instead. It sniffs their fear, and chooses Addie to be its target. It releases a loud scream to soften the window glass. The creeper breaks off the glass and grabs Addie away, while her friend helplessly watches her being taken away. A while later, Sheriff and Sergeant arrive at Grandma's house to inspect the creeper's hand. She tells them that her dead son found the creeper's hand and took it home the night before he died. She speculates that he touched it, making him terrified and angry with it. So he attempted to kill and buried it on the hilltop. Grandma shows the creeper's creepy hand to them. She warns them to be careful of touching it, since it would reveal the creature's history. But Sheriff wants to touch it, so he can possibly learn the way they can kill it. He then touches the hand taken out of the jar, which puts him into a hypnotized state, as he possibly learns the creeper's origin secrets. One of the members also wants to touch it, but Sergeant prevents them. Elsewhere, the creeper leaves its truck. Addie wakes up inside, and notices another person alive. They are covered with cloth, and completely tied up. They then cooperate with each other to find a way out. As Addie manages to free herself using the blade, she also frees the person from being tied up, who turns out to be Rude Guy. Addie wonders why the creeper did not kill them yet. Rude Guy answers that the creeper seems to be in a hurry. He tries to open the door using its handle. But instead of opening, a metal rod comes out, instantly impaling him on the head. Now, Addie is only the sole living person inside. She hears the creeper, so she immediately covers herself again. The creeper then opens the door, and brings another victim. It soon figures out that the dead rude guy attempted to escape. Meanwhile, Sheriff and his group receive a report about the creeper's recent attack. They immediately drive away to respond to the situation. Along the way, they encounter the creeper driving its truck. Sheriff drives closer to the truck, and instructs Sergeant to shoot its tire. Sergeant hits the tire, but the bullet ricochets back. The truck drops a metallic ball that rolls towards their car. They evade it, but it soon rolls back towards them. Sergeant shoots it, making it explode. Meanwhile, they see their members with a machine gun, approaching the truck from the other side. They warn their members not to shoot it, because the bullets will ricochet back to them. But it's too late. The gunman opens fire on the truck. Just then, the bullet ricochets back to the team, instantly killing both of them. The truck drops an explosive ball, making the machine gun vehicle fly away. It then drops another explosive ball, and explodes the vehicle carrying sheriff and sergeant. After the explosion, their vehicle lands in the middle of the field. Sergeant wakes up, and sees the creeper truck approaching. So he wakes up sheriff, and gets out of the vehicle. He takes the gun, and prepares to shoot any time. They see the creeper walk out of its truck. Sheriff tells sergeant to swallow his fear. Sergeant shoots at the creeper, as it approaches him but it manages to shield itself. He shoots again, hitting the creeper's hat, which makes the creeper angry. So it throws a shuriken at him, destroying his gun. Sheriff manages to run towards the heavy machine gun vehicle. He taunts the creeper to come at him. The creeper approaches him quickly with its axe. He opens fire at the creeper, as it flies towards him, 
and the bullet pierces through its body. But the creeper still lands on him, and kills him with the axe. The creeper stands up, and pulls the axe out of his head. Meanwhile, Sergeant grieves after witnessing the scene, and just helplessly runs away. At night, Grandma plans to fight back against the creeper. Her dead son warns her that she will not be able to defeat it. He also informs her that it has already taken Addie away. The friend arrives at the scene to inform Grandma about Addie. So they both go together to search for her. On the other side, the creeper smells Addie's fear, and figures out she is still alive. So it proceeds to attack her. In response, she crawls towards the driver's seat, and the creeper follows her. She pulls the door handle, which actives the metal rod trap, impaling the creeper's head. It screams in agony, as its big eye pops out of its head. The creeper gets trapped from it, allowing her to jump out of its truck, while avoiding its snap trap. The creeper eventually removes itself from the metal rod, and begins chasing Addie, who is now running away. It tries to fly towards her, but its injury prevents it from flying. The creeper then throws a shuriken at her, but it misses because of the creeper's lost eye. It throws a spear next, but it only hits her jacket this time. The frustrated creeper then chases her with the axe. As it is about to catch her, a speedy truck hits it, allowing her to escape successfully. The truck driver comes to check it, and only finds its smelly feet. So he calls the police to report it. Just then, the creeper instantly lands on him. The creeper walks in the middle of the field, and finds the warning sign with its own hand, created by grandma earlier. The sign warns the creeper that they have already figured out its origin secret. The creeper then breaks its own hand, and releases a wild scream in anger, which kills the crows around. Meanwhile, the friend finds Addie hiding in the grass field. She reunites with grandma later, and the three of them hug together after the tragic events. The following day, the friend visits Addie before going for their trip. He kisses her goodbye, and rides the school bus filled with athlete students, who had just won the championship. The movie ends 23 years after where Derry's sister records herself narrating the story of the creeper. She shares the story of how the creeper victimized people. She calls everyone to group up to fight back with the creeper. In the end, she says she will destroy the creeper, and taunts it to come to get her. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.